Lim soups and limits. So we're going to start with basic definitions. Let's say we have a sequence a n. A subsequential limit of a n is simply a limit of any subsequence of a n. Now, a particular kind of subsequence that will be important for us is the tail subsequence. That's a subsequence that starts at num some number that is cap n plus one here, and then just continues with all the rest of the terms of the sequence n. So we're going to call that a tail. And then if we take the supremum of the tails, that gives us a function that depends on cap n. If we take the limit of that function as cap n goes to infinity, that's what we call the limb soup of the sequence. So this is a complicated notion and it's hard to visualize. And so we're gonna look at several uh, graphical examples to try to make sense of this. It has an opposite notion, the limit infimum, um, which is the, the limit of the, this is written incorrectly, that's the limit of the infimum of those tails. So uh, that gives us the limit infimum of uh, the tails of the sequences starting at n plus one. Now, uh, let's look at some specific sequence, sequences a n so that we can visualize what's really going on here. So here's a situation where we have an alternating sequence, minus one to the nth power. This star star in Python is the exponentiation operator. So this is minus one to the nth power. Now, if we plot it, then we get this kind of thing. Um, if, we, if we plot, now notice that this sequence doesn't converge, right? It goes from minus one to one, minus one to one. The lines here are kind of artificial. The sequence only takes values for integers, uh, but the lines kind of help you see the relationship between these points. Um, so they're not really part of what's being graphed here, but they help you see the, the relationships between them and the fact that it goes up and down and up and down. So um, this, this sequence doesn't converge. Um, it flip-flops between plus and minus one. It never settles down. But if we only look at a subsequence of it, for example, if we only look at the even values of n, that is 2, 4, 6, then this sequence is now plotted in green. Um, that gives us a subsequence, which is a constant sequence 1, and that obviously converges to 1. And if we look only at the odd values, then we get a constant sequence, which takes values minus 1, and so that converges. If we take a tail of this sequence, um, so like this, then we skip a few terms, and then we start at the position 7, and then we continue. This is a subsequence which doesn't converge. And no matter which tail we take, this subsequence will fail to converge. But even though this subse the, the tail subsequences fail to converge, they still have a well-defined maximum and minimum. Now, not every sequence tail will have a maximum and a minimum, but it will have a supremum and an infimum. So, um, so here we notice that this tail sequence that begins at stage 21 here and continues, it has a soup, which is one, and an inf, which is minus one. And in fact, no matter where we begin reading this sequence, we will always have uh, a tail sequence with an infimum of minus one and a supremum of plus one. So that plus one is kind of constant for this sequence. It is all, the supremum of a tail of this sequence is always equal to positive one, and an infimum of a tail of this sequence is always equal to minus one. So um, let's look at a more complicated example. Here's a rational function, and here's its graph. Now, I want to start plotting all of this. We see here in green, we have this graph. There's some sort of asymptote going on here, but the asymptote is at the value n equals 4.4, which is not one of the legitimate inputs to this sequence because this only takes integer values. Now, we've got these things connected with uh, gray lines here so that you can see the relationship between them. But the gray lines are not part of the sequence. The sequence is just these values here. So we start uh, a little bit negative, and then we go much more negative, and then we return up here. And then it looks like we have a, a, a limit here long term. And if we look at the formula for this thing, um, then we see that there's a limit of 3. So, um, so now, what happens when we look at certain subsequences? Here, if we look at the evens, uh, not much changes. We get a certain limit. Uh, if we look at the odds, not much changes, we get the same limit, we get the same behavior. What's going on here is this sequence, in, in contrast to the prior sequence, this sequence CN has a limit itself. And so what happens when you take a subsequence is every subsequence will converge to that same limit. If we just look at a tail of that sequence and we just look at, say, the values where the index is greater than 10, then we start at a certain location and we go on out. But this is a subsequence and it has the same limit as the original sequence. Um, if we look at an even uh, a tail even farther along, then we start at 21 and we go on out, 
This is a nearly constant subsequence. It's already close to converging to the limiting value. And it has a limit, which is the same as the limit of the original sequence, which of course is three from the formula. Uh, this formula is not correct. It's not um, consistent with the formula given here because I changed this to 4.4, so let's fix that. So every tail here is a subsequence and the tail subsequences converge to the same value. But the suprema and the infima of the tails are not exactly equal to that value, right? If I take this tail of the subsequence, then the infimum of the tail, it looks like this is decreasing towards some limit. And the infimum of the tail is probably that limit. But the supremum of that tail is this value right here, this maximum value when n equals six. And if I back up a little bit, the supremum of this tail is going to be, this is taking a moment to compute, the supremum of this tail is going to be uh, approximately 28 or something, but the infimum of this tail is the limiting value of the sequence, which is going to be three. Um, if I take a different tail starting here, then I actually get neither the supremum nor the infimum of this tail is equal to the limit of the sequence. Uh, the supremum is going to be 28, and the infimum is going to be minus 30 and change. Um, however, if I let these locations at which I start the tail go out farther and farther, then they get closer and closer to calculating directly the limit of the tail. In other words, the supremum of this tail is very close to the limit, and the infimum of this tail is equal to the limit. So as this number gets larger, then the supremum and the infimum of these tails gets closer and closer to being the actual limiting value. And that affects what we will expect from the limb soup. The limb soup is obtained by taking the supremum of these tails and then letting the tail location go to infinity. And what happens there is this will get closer and closer to the limit of the sequence an if that limit exists, and similarly for the limb infimum. So um, let's look at a few more slightly more interesting examples. So this is a peculiar alternating sequence sine 2 pi n over 3 plus 3 over n. So it has this alternating behavior from the sine function, um, but it also has this, um, this decreasing behavior from the 3 over n function. And so we get this kind of rich behavior here. Now, this, does this sequence converge? Well, no. Um, this sequence just um, goes back and forth, back and forth here, but then it eventually stabilizes for this behavior, which looks, if you look at this graph, it looks like it's going minus one, zero, one, minus one, zero, one. But if you check the trigonometry, it's not actually minus one, zero, one. It's minus the square root of three over two, zero, and plus the square root of three over two. Of course, modified by this three over n term, which gets smaller and smaller as we read out on this graph. So this is a sequence that doesn't converge. But notice that the highlight here is identifying a subsequence of it, and that subsequence does converge and it converges to a value close to one, that value being root three over two. Um, we, there are other subsequences of this sequence which converge. This is a different subsequence of the sequence. It converges to minus the square root of three over two. And then if we set this equal to zero and we get the other terms, then this sequence, this is a subsequence of the original sequence, every third term, which converges to zero. So a sequence can have many different uh, subsequential limits. And that's kind of confusing, right? The sequence itself doesn't have any limits, but it has many subsequences. And among the subsequences, we get a variety of limits. And so that might seem like some very sort of strange behavior, but things can get much stranger still. So this is an interesting sequence, which is good for, good for training your brain to think in a very complex way. Uh, you can ignore the, the formula for the sequence that I've given here in code. Um, this sequence is going to generate rational numbers in the interval from zero to one. We're gonna start with one half. We're gonna start with a mild denominator of two, and then we're gonna go up to a denominator three, and then four, and then five. And the numerators are just gonna take all possible values count counting up from one, uh, so that we get numbers within this range from zero to one, not including zero, not including one. So one half, one third, two thirds, one quarter, one quarter two quarters, three quarters, a fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Notice there's some repetition here. Two quarters is one half. Three sixths is one half. But no matter, a sequence is allowed to repeat terms, so that's fine. So this is a peculiar sequence. And I have it graphed here. 
um, together with, let's, um, let's graph all here. So here is a graph of the sequence. Notice this is the behavior where we're going up in the sixth, one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, five sixths. And then these are the sevenths and these are the eighths climbing up gradually and the ninths climbing up gradually. So um, this sequence has a lot of interesting behaviors here. Um, it should be clear from the graph, we should not expect this to have a limit. And this doesn't have a limit. It has many values that are close to zero, like a quarter and a fifth and a sixth. It has many values that are close to one, like two thirds and three quarters and four fifths and five sixths. And it's not settling down to any particular values. If we focus on some subsequences of it, however, then we can see that it does have some subsequences which converge. Here, I'm focusing on the highest of these terms, one half, two thirds, three quarters, four fifths, five sixths, et cetera. These values are gonna to converge to one. If we look at the slightly next, next along the way values, then we get this, the terms one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth, one sixth, and these values converge to zero. There are also infinitely many occurrences of the, of the number one half here, one half, two quarters, three sixths, and uh, four eighths, et cetera. So uh, there's a subsequence which converges to one half. So you, so you see here, this sequence has many, many subsequences converging to many different values, um, including, um, including zero and one and one half. And as a matter of fact, um, for any number, between zero and one, this strange sequence here will have some subsequence which will converge to that number. And the reason fundamentally is that for any value you want between zero and one, whether it's rational or not, there will be rational numbers with higher and higher denominators that get closer and closer and closer to that number that you want. And so, um, so this sequence has many, many subsequences. Now let's look at, um, let's look at the tails in particular so let's just start at a certain space here and then look at the tail. Now this tail subsequence doesn't converge, um, but it does have a supremum. Um, it has values like, uh, what is this? This is four fifths and five sixths and six sevenths and seven eighths. It has all of these values. And if we take the supremum of all of these numbers represented in green, we're gonna get included in those values will be all of these numbers very close to one and the supremum of that will be equal to one. So if you took all of these numbers in green and took the supremum, you would get one. If you took all of these same numbers and took the infimum, then you would also get one. And so um, if you just start with this particular tail subsequence, take the supremum and infimum of it, you'd get one and zero here. Now, what if you read a little bit farther on and then try to do the same thing? So if we, if we start at position 21 here, and then we read on out, then what would be the supremum of all of these values? Well, we still have values that are getting very, very close to one here, and we still have values that are very, getting very, very close to zero here. And so the supremum of these values would also be one, and the infimum of these values would also be zero. And it doesn't matter where we start, no matter where we start, sometime on, farther on in the infinity of this sequence, we will get many values close to one, and we will get many values close to zero. So no matter where we start for this subsequence, then the supremum will be one and the infimum will be zero. So if we take the limb soup or the limit, then we will be taking the limit of all of those ones or the limit of all of those zeros. And so we will get one or zero. So this, um, this illustrates a sequence um, with, a, with a limb soup equal to one and a limit equal to zero and a wide variety of subsequential limits in between.